Today we're at the offices of Sopaji, and Darren Kimura is Chief Executive Officer and President of the company. And he's here with us to tell us a little bit about what's happening with Solar, his company, and also what his plans are for contributing to clean energy in Hawaii. So, Darren, thanks for being with us today. Ah, thank you for having me. Good. Now, I was always been curious about your name, the company name, Sopaji. Can you tell us a little bit about how you came with that? You know, when we created the company, we actually created the technology first. And what we ended up with is a concentrating a solar panel that uses mirrors on a motor. So once we developed that, we wanted to be unique because the panel that we had created was very unique. And we also wanted it to mean something that, uh, or, or have meaning. So we took the words solar power technology and we kind of jammed them together and that's how we created SOPAGI. So SOPAGI is the SO from solar, PO from power, and the GY from technology, SOPAGI. All right, I got that. Uh, now you've installed uh, projects in Hawaii. You've also installed them internationally. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've done in these locations? Sure. So SOPAGI is a manufacturer. We developed these panels. Uh, they're concentrating solar technology. And then effectively what we do is we harness the heat from the sun and we run that through many collectors and we get to a very high level of heat. So what we can do with that is we can use that heat to produce energy in many different ways. So around the world we have projects in places like Spain, Jordan, Egypt, Abu Dhabi, Papua New Guinea, uh, Japan, uh, Mexico, throughout the United States and Hawaii. And we do things that, uh, where we use our solar panels for power generation we also use our solar panels for creating air conditioning and even things like desalinating water. So we make drinking water out of seawater with the panel. Is that by using the uh, panels to cook the water and get the salt out? Yeah, pretty Evaporation much. Evaporation process, is that the idea? It's, that's exactly right. It's a distillation process like you would do when you go camping. You know, you take water from the stream, you put it over the, you know, the hot fire and then, you know, it begins to condensate and whatnot. That's what we do too. Um, of course, we do it in a, in a very concentrated way. So we can actually, you know, create cases, if you will, of bottled water from this technology. Okay, good. The state is interested in creating a, a, a system and a grid supplied by a lot of different types of technologies. Where do you see that your technology fits in? How can you be a, a part of the whole here? Yeah, the, the concept of the smart community is one where you have a lot of different types of energy generating devices on one grid with some kind of software that is running the grid, so actively managing what's happening. For example, when the windmill stops blowing, there's no energy that needs to be supplemented by something else, so the software is going to be able to figure that part out and pull energy in from someplace else. So the software basically interconnects everybody. It uh, monitors who's contributing what to the grid, and it says basically, okay, you're down or you're reduced, I want more from you. Is that the idea? That's that right, works? yes. So that's a part of it. Uh, so exactly right, it's actively sensing what's happening in the uh, city, if you will, real time. So what's using energy and what is not. But a part of that requires you to have stable and firm energy. And the way we get stable and firm energy now is we burn oil. So we burn oil, you know, X amount of oil all the time, and that's what we call our base load. Mm -hmm. And renewable energy doesn't typically dip into the base load because renewables are very volatile. The wind can stop blowing at any time, a cloud can block the sun, and you get no solar energy from photovoltaics. Right. What Sopaji's technology does, we actually have the capability to incorporate energy storage. And the way we do that, again, is because we generate heat with the solar panel. We take that heat and we store it into a large container, kind of like a big thermos. So the energy coming out of that thermos is going into our turbine at a consistent level. It doesn't matter if you've got sun or clouds, it's still coming out at a consistent level. So you can kind of firm up the power even though the sun may not be as bright on a certain part of the day. Exactly. We can run it at night, we can run it during cloudy periods, you know, we can run it during the system peak, which is you know, between 5 to 9 p.m. So one of the advantages of the, our technology as it relates to the smart community is that we now become part of the base load solution. So by doing large projects with CSP, concentrating solar power, which is what we do, uh, you can actually take offline generators that might be producing energy but using fossil fuels. Well, in terms of having this type of storage, it requires land. 
these units requires acreage. Land in Hawaii is expensive. I'm sure if you go overseas, I think land is very inexpensive. What do you do to find land here? Uh, what do you do for permitting? Is it really difficult to set up, say, a solar farm on Oahu or the neighbor islands at this uh, point? At this point, not so difficult. You know, we, you're right, land is a challenge in, in Hawaii. It's expensive. Um, you know, we have, we're an island, so you, there's, not, there's not an abundance of the land. But we still have a lot of land. You know, lands that were once used for sugarcane, for example, that are now barren. Um, now weeds might be growing on those. Those could be converted into solar farming. So, and there's a lot of them. You know, we've got a lot of military lands. We've got a lot of uh, lands that were once used for military type purposes, but no longer. Now they're being overgrown by keawe. Um, you know, we have lands that were once used for landfills, for example, that, you know, you really can't build anything, anything on top of, but they're still good lands. You could use those lands, that gray, kind of gray land, if you will, and put solar panels on top of that. So today, there's still quite a bit of opportunity on Oahu, you know, several, maybe 100 megawatts worth of potential for, uh, for the island of Oahu. And of course, that expands on neighbor islands as well. Can you use rooftops? Does a rooftop of a big facility yeah. or a big warehouse, does that supply you with enough space to put solar panels and make it efficient? Oh, absolutely. So what we do specifically is we use these mirrors again and we create heat. So on the commercial rooftop, what we would do is use these solar panels, use the heat, and create air conditioning directly. So the way that you might be thinking about air conditioning today is you've got a building, you've got a, you know, a device that you plug into the wall, and that creates air conditioning. So it uses electricity. That, that's a good process, but it's a relatively inefficient process. You know, that motor is getting hot. It uses refrigerants, which may not be so good for the environment. The thermal air conditioning solution that we have, we're able to use the solar panels, you know, activate a chemical, which is normally found in the ocean, so it's naturally occurring. What about the supply power to the grid? Can, can rooftops be leased, for example, mm. to offset, say, the land price uh, so that companies can give enough space so that more power can go into the grid. Is that possible or is a rooftop too small? Oh, no, no, definitely possible today. And it's happening pretty big. Um, so you'll find buildings all over the state now with, with PV panels on them. In many cases, those systems are designed to take that building off the grid. But in some cases, that system is designed to not only take that building off the grid, but also send electrons into the grid for you know excess power as well. I know the flat panels are yes. like that, but are yours also workable for that type of system? Today, no. Today, Sopaji's technologies would be used on the rooftop for air conditioning, and if you wanted to do power, we'd like to do them big. Okay, so you'd need land. We would need land on the ground. Okay, so in terms of the permitting, is there a, uh, can you estimate two years, three years down the road for permitting? And I mean, let's just say that you decided, okay, well, we're going to put in the panels and we're going to supply power to the grid. How long would it take? What's your lead time on permitting and financing and things like that? About 18 to 24 months. So about a year and a half to two years. Exactly. And in terms of financing, is, uh, is financing available? For financing is definitely available. The rate of return, which is what the financier is going to look for to make a go or no go decision, the rate of return is very good. So it's uh, absolutely financeable. Um, you know, the challenge... Can you give me an idea of what the rate of return is? Sure. Yeah, on a 20-year basis, a lot of investors are looking for something at about 8% to maybe low 20s. So just to give you an idea of the comparison, if you went to the bank today and you put in $100, you might get 2%. Uh, you could take that same $100 and put them into a solar project and get 8%, but possibly even up to 20%. So there, it's a very good bandwidth, very much more attractive uh, than conventional forms of financing. So that's totally available today. In terms of the international scope, do you have any, can you give us a clue as to what else you've got coming up uh, internationally? Well, you know, Sofaji as a manufacturer, our goal is to sell our products all around the world. Uh, and we're very bullish right now on Asia. Uh, with the concerns that they have there over nuclear energy uh, and, you know, especially now. Out. Yeah, especially now. Uh, they're moving, they're shifting over to green energy solutions. And our technology, because we're heat, not light, works better in places like Asia where you might have more clouds. So as a result of that, you know, we're finding very good traction out that way. Um, we're doing quite a bit in the Middle East right now as well. The interesting phenomenon there is that the government subsidizes the oil. 
the use of oil domestically. So the oil companies would prefer to sell the oil because that they get full rate recovery on as opposed to using it domestically. So to offset that, they're using renewable energy, which I think is very ironic. Well, they've got enough sun and heat over there, so the sun shines quite brightly. I, I would say it's similar to Hawaii. Yes. It's probably a lot drier, though. At APEC, you signed a memorandum with a Chinese company. Can you tell us uh, what's been happening with that? Has anything gone forward with that? Yes, we've been working quite hard on, on trying to uh, develop our relationship. Uh, so the intent was that this company uh, based in China, which was part of the APEC uh, constituency, uh, would come to Hawaii, invest in Hawaii, you know, build projects in Hawaii with us, and we would go to China and do the same thing. We would bring our technology to China, uh, build power projects out there. So, you know, we're, we've been working on this quite hard, um, and it's continuing to develop. So hopefully soon we can see some of the fruits of that labor. All right. And when I went out to the uh, wind farm or the wind turbine or a facility in Kahuku, that facility puts out enough power for 7,700 homes. Mm -hmm. How much would you need in terms of acreage or space to put out 7,700 homes, enough power for that? It'd probably be about the same amount of acreage as a wind farm. So whatever the, the total area is that they would need, we're probably about the same amount of area. Um, I don't know what that would be off, off the bat, but it'd be a lot. I mean, as you can imagine, these wind farms are, you know, the windmills are spaced pretty far between themselves. So uh, all renewables uh, are pretty land intensive. They're land intensive. So everybody's up against the same situation. Yes. Yeah, of course, with windmills, you can put them in terrain areas where it might be more mountainous or rocky. Solar, we would prefer it to be on the leeward side where it's sunnier, but also... And does the land bit. have to be flat as well? A little flatter, yes. Yes. Just a, a consistency with the with the solar rays coming down? Yes. The flatter it is, the less losses you have in a field. So the more you know elevation changes you have, the more areas for possible loss. So if you can make it flat, you'll have the most efficient field. Okay, very good. Is there anything you'd like to add? No, I think what's happening right now in Hawaii is very exciting. You know, we see a lot of new projects coming online. We need it all. I mean, the, the goal of set by the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative is very ambitious. But I think together with our technologies, working together to try and improve state policies, uh, we can get there. So, you know, this is a great time to be in clean energy. Okay, I agree. Thanks very much. Thank you.